Last time y'all voted for the Michaelis, so let's get into it. Not a whole lot to talk about on this kit, very little extra work to do. Content wise, it's a bit underwhelming, it's very light, but I think this minimal look can still be pretty cool. Proportion wise, the Michaelis is very tall, much taller than my aerial, even though I added like 4mm to uh, the overall height on the aerial. So this is going to look pretty good just as is. The only issue here is that these uh, hollowed out feet, they're pretty standard so you should be pretty used to them by now. The insides of these claw parts can be tricky to paint, I've seen a lot of builders copying out with stickers. Notably, they managed to make a single part head, so no seam line on the head, although you still have to uh, send down these mold lines. I definitely recommend this kit as like a paint practice kit, uh, as there is little to nothing to fix. Anyways, let's get right into it. Since there's a lot less to talk about, let's get into some basics. This kit has a lot of slightly curved surfaces. I'm trying to do a glossy surface here, so I need to sand down most of these surfaces. The usual sanding board doesn't work on curves, and uh, sponge sticks are too flexible that they will get rid of some of these uh, straight edges. Here I'm using these thin sticks. There is a light layer of sponge in the middle, so the stick will follow the curve just enough and wouldn't affect the straight edges. For the more curved parts, you would obviously still need those uh, softer sponges. Here we have some tiny little areas that sanding boards can't really reach, so we'll be using a metal edge sanding stick. After all that sanding, a lot of detail would be uh, inevitably lost, so we will need to etch them back. I'm adding some minor details to the kit, starting with extra scribing. My process is to first draw on what I roughly want with a pencil, then lay out as much as I can in one stroke with this uh, display measuring tape. Penalized look the best when they're in one continuous stroke. Curved surfaces are a bit different. If you put a straight line on a curve, as you can see, it actually doesn't look straight. To get a straight line on a curve, you would need to actually follow the curve. We'll do that by using this curved metal edge plate. First, we'll measure a section that follows this uh, existing line. Obviously, you can't just scribe with the plate itself as a guide, so we'll use this to cut out a section of scribing tape. Well, in fact, four sections because we'll need four. After that, it's just regular scribing as usual, and you'll get a pretty good straight line on a curved surface. I'm going to also add some styrene plate details. Some people just kind of glue bits right onto the part, but that can look pretty unnatural. I usually do this by first making a placement hole by scribing with a bit that's slightly wider than my intended material. Then I'm inserting a stick of styrene in there with some glue. After that, I use the stencil I made with styrene plate to get an even cut. With some light sanding after, you'll get a very natural looking detail that'll really pop once you give it a different color. There's this uh, weird little nipple <laughs> on the side of the kneecaps with a mold line, so the easiest way to deal with that is just to get rid of the entire detail by sanding it off. Sometimes the best way to deal with a difficult detail is just getting rid of it and remaking it. After the part is completely smooth, I'm first finding a center by drilling a small hole in the middle. Then with this uh, metal edge plate for uh, round holes, I'm drilling a round recess for adding a metal edge rivet later. I kind of messed up on this uh, scribe. As you can see, I went over a little bit, so this is a great opportunity to demonstrate how you would fix that. What you want to do is actually deepen the groove a little bit so glue can actually flow in. After that, I got some medium viscosity super glue. This specific one is brown, but the color doesn't really matter here. Get a little bit in there for uh, this type of repair because I want the glue to fully flow into the groove. I'm not using an activator. I'm just waiting a day for it to dry and sand. And uh, there, I fixed it pretty nicely. I didn't mention this part earlier, but the ankle also needs filling, which I kind of messed up on here, uh, missing a little bit of material on the side. 
This is a super easy fix though. This time I'm using some uh, white medium thick super glue. I think this is perhaps the best quick feel material. This time I am using uh, some activator because I want the glue to actually uh, cure fast and retain volume. I also forgot to mention this leg part. Uh, it's a little bit of a seam, which I don't know why it's there, especially since the upper part is made into this panel detail. So I'm going to continue that by just uh, turning the seam into a panel line by scribing uh, on it. The antenna is a bit dull, and you already know what we have to do. Pull out the Starbond thick CA glue and uh, we can start layering. I like to hold the part upside down here to make sure the glue bulb retains the most volume. I hit the glue immediately with some CA glue activator, then uh, another bulb on top. That's already looking pretty close. I think I did a couple more layers as I sanded this down to a point, but yeah, the entire process takes uh, only a couple minutes. Alright, let's get into painting. First, let's talk about the main color. I didn't want to do another shade of white. I've done so many of those this past year, and uh, I really like the glossy build I did last time, so I'm going to try my hands at a pearl white. I got three different methods here. These two are done with silver base and clear white on top. The left right here uses star silver. It's got finer glitter bits than regular silver base, which is on the right. Uh, so it looks... A little more right for pearl and the right here is probably closer to what Pete Bandai calls uh, titanium white for their uh, limited edition kits. This one on the other hand is done by a regular glossy white base then uh, this moonstone pearl paint. It's kind of a clear pearl texture and I think this is the most pearly one out of all of them. It's got this warm look which I like for this build so uh, we'll go with that. Let's see that in action. White base, and uh, when you put this pearl texture on, we have a uh, very pearly shine. Although I'm never gonna have these under UV lights, I painted all the Witch for Mercury kits with fluorescent paints in the light up bit. So I have to keep it consistent with this one. I don't have any fluorescent blue or purple on hand, so I have to improvise. I started with a metallic blue, first with a silver base, and then clear blue. This is basically how you make any metallic colors, by the way. Then uh, I went over that with a fluorescent pink, and uh, it's got this pretty cool uh, gradient purple look. I masked this with the uh, included uh, decals. For the purple colors on the body, for uh, the darker tones, I used uh, black as base, white highlights with this uh, 0.18mm airbrush I just got. This is a uh, GSI Creos PS771, and uh, after that, I laid a thin layer of some random leftover purple I had, uh, actually from uh, the Master Grade Dom. Uh, shading looks like a lot of work, but when you have two airbrushes working simultaneously, you can get it done for not that much more time than uh, just flat paint. This kit has a lot of these little bits of recessed details, so you know it's time for the wiping technique. I painted the parts with enamel black, then I used some enamel thinner to wipe out the excess. Super quick and easy way to fill in details. Okay, so not sure how many people are going to use this tip, but I'm going to paint these claws without stickers. First, I'm going to create these round edge lines with the small round masking stickers and a one millimeter thick section of tape cut by my uh, guide board. This matches up with the shape on the stickers pretty nicely. After that, it's just regular masking, and I would say the final result doesn't actually look that bad. Obviously, this is a lot of effort for something that you can get away with by just using stickers, but for me, not using stickers is m more of a principle thing, so I'm going to uh, go the long way about it. Alright, so just a couple of things to wrap up the kit. I'm using the official Bandai decals for this kit, not a whole lot of decals to overshadow the kit itself. Uh, I hand painted the cockpit and uh, polished all the glossy parts of this kit. You can watch more about my polishing process in the video on the top right of the screen. And last but not the least, put the little metal etching bit into the part. 
And、uh, that's about it. Let's take a look at the result. All right, that was the high grade witch from Mercury Michaelis. I think it's a great beginner kit if you want to start painting. No significant issue whatsoever, and it could be a, a great base for customizing. It's kind of got this inquisitor look in a show about witches, so the idea is also great. Highly recommend this kit. Oh, and、uh, let's do another round of votes for the next kit,、uh, either the high grade、uh, impulse or the high grade goof custom. Let me know which one you want to vote for in the comments. I'll see you guys next time.